All right, so I have three hacks with me uh, that is not like specifically a growth hack as such, like in sales, but more like hacks when you do startup. I have three different kinds with me. Um, but I think what I will speak about is, is more like, you know, so we heard some examples of how to do growth hack and, and you can learn from that. But I think what I want to say about is how we do growth hacking in, in our company in audio yo because we do it all the time. It's part of our culture and it's about being creative and so on. So it's more like how we in everyday life, almost when we need lunch, like to get first in line, how you hack that to get the best out of it. It's a lot about creativity. Um, so it's kind of like saying, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, but you know, we find a hack because we got so many challenges uh, in our path so far that we just need, we had to hack our way through things. Otherwise, it'll be too slow. Uh, one slide and a couple numbers, and that's all about AudioYo. But AudioYo is a company that is disrupting uh, the takeaway market. And it's a long story, and you'll probably say, well, there's Just Eat and so on. So what I normally say is that we are just like Just Eat, but we are very different. So, we are, so think about Just Eat, and we are completely different. Because what we do is a white label system. So 85% of all takeaway orders comes from returning clients. So think about it. Not the young ones who live on Amabruga and so on, who like go everywhere and get kebab and something like that. But those of you who are a little more like steady like that, you order your food normally from two, maybe three places. You take your pizza from that guy and your sushi from Japan sushi or steaks and sushi or whatever. So people tend to go to the same places. And 85% of all orders comes from the same returning clients for every takeaway. So why do they tell them to go back to the portal every time? So if you look at e-commerce, how it works, you will buy a lead, you heard about it all the time here, all at Facebook, you buy a lead and then you bring them on and then it's your customer. You don't send them back. So if I buy, I wanna buy a t-shirt, I go to, uh, to Google and I search and I end at Zalando, I buy a t-shirt. So what do Zalando tell you afterwards? Please go back to Google next time, search for us and find us. And you're laughing, but that's how the takeaway industry is until now. They keep going back. And those poor fellas, you know, the ones who are making your food are paying 20 to 30, actually 35% sometimes for every order, every time, even though you've ordered before. So some of you have maybe tried that your pizza guy would tell you, could you please call me next time? It's better, you know, like, you know, and who calls anymore? So, so what has happened is that just it has matured in mar this market and now everybody, like look at the development we saw the horses and now there's cars and now there's smartphones. Everybody orders on the phone, a lot of them anyway. And that has gone in five, 10 minutes, it's changed from the phone to just ordering on your, you know. And those poor pizza bakers, they couldn't follow along so they just gave it to Just Eat and Deliveroo and so on. And all of a sudden they have taken over. So we are changing that. So we are making their own app and their own website and they get the whole thing in a package free and then they pay an average 500 kron a month. And they love it because they can save 20 to 30% on every order. That's the short version. Right, so a lot have happened in the companies in the last 12 months because one month ago, uh, sorry, one year ago, it really took off. So this, this baby is like, three years old, uh, but one year ago, it really took off. So we went, so last summer, we were two employees, now we are 70. We had 20 restaurants, now we have 1,500. Everybody's got an app. So we made 1,000, well, it's 400 now, apps and app stores. So if you go to app store, don't do that now, but if you go to app store and you search for AudioYo, you will get 1,400 hits. <laughs> and Android, and it's native made. It's not like Samarin or something, it's native real apps. We're getting, I think this month will be 40,000 orders this month, uh, and we are in three countries, and we are C Capital's fastest growing company, not like, but thirsty. So we got all the money from them, like also the last option, in the fastest. So I got their investment in November, and then already in February, I called them and said, and now I need you to give me the rest of the money. And they said, it's never happened like that before. We have two years, we could just sit back and wait. And I said, who, 
who want to wait? Let's go. <laughs> so, um, so it took me six months to call the option. I got uh, the rest of the money in uh, June. Um, so it, it's even faster in the Vino and Trustpilot and everybody like that. So I, I, I want to keep up with that. And we got some money in. Um, and the way we look at it is like we have made a sausage factory, and maybe that's the wrong word. What I really mean is that we made a very, very lean kind of way the way we work. So everybody in the company is working, they know exactly what to do. So we are getting a lot of cold leads. We have sales guys selling, we got someone to do the production of all the apps, we got someone to onboard the clients, and we do some advertisement for them. And in the end, we have some really cool clients who are getting a lot of orders through the system we made for them. And there's like this assembly line, let's call it that. What we call the sauce effects, right? But it may be another word for chaos, but it's not. So it's, everybody works very efficiently. But then we, we, want, we are focusing on things all the way. So it used to be that it took us two to three hours to make every app. And now it takes us less than 15 minutes. So we, we hack the problems that we meet in different ways. And some of them are just like, let's try that and then do that. So I have a team of people sitting outside looking in and seeing where is the bottleneck right now or where are we spending too much money on doing stuff and then they try something they take maybe five clients out in april they take those five uh, five clients out they try to do things in a different way and if it works they implement another way to do it another wheel in the assembly line to make it more efficient and this is really working well like this so right now we're getting 200 clients in, 200 restaurants, mostly in the UK, into our system every month. And they all get an app, they all get a web, they all get up and running, and we are converting their customers from Just Eat Hungry House Deliveroo to this platform, and then they're making their saving so much money. So we are saving our restaurants, in average, 17,000 pounds every year. So that's a lot of money for them. So that's how we do it. And there's so many things we did, like using robots to crawl Google to find the most interesting restaurants in an area. So if you say, I want pizza in Liverpool, then you have a search result. And then I use Dixie, which is also seed investment of their robots, so that it can just, we can just have that go in you know, search for all the cities in the UK and all the pizza places. And then the top branded ones are the ones that we want because they have a great brand. And then those leads are giving to the callers and they start uh, closing their clients. So there's so many things we do. But actually, growth is not the problem. So we haven't done that many hacks. It's more like how we produce things and how we onboard the customers of the pizza places. That's how we hacked a lot. So it's another thing that is funny that came to my attention is that when I started LanguageWire, like, 17 years ago, so you're getting old. That's one thing that you realize. But <laughs> another thing is that we work in days now and not like months or even years. Things need to happen now. And, and one of the places is how I, we hire people. And I'll get back to that. It's really, you know, so actually we are, we are make, building a new app right now. And we talked to another uh, startup company in Denmark that we needed their technology. And we had a great meeting because we're doing a lot of manual things with some Indian guys. Uh, I don't know what you call them, but guys living in India. So not Indians, but... Indians, uh, so, <laughs> but guys in India, and so they are, they are doing stuff for us and we wanted to make that more efficient. And then we had a meeting with this Danish startup and we said, this is great, when can we start? Yeah, it's gonna take us a couple of months to build that. And that's just, this just, you know, months, you know, like in a couple of months from now, everything is different. So what really is, is very different is that things happen really fast and if it's not fast, we will hack it so we find a way. It's really amazing how fast the team is working like that. So we are talking days or even hours, uh, day, uh, yeah, hours to make things happen. So I have three hacks for you. The way we hire people, and I've actually taught this to many people now, so you will see the way we hire people, it has, and many people have covered, uh, copied that now, how we do that. Then I have a startup hack that can, you can use, not just when you do the startup, but also when you do things like, like don't think about efficiency, just get going and so on. And then uh, a little growth hack. So this is how we hire. So this is a saying now in our company. So if someone's saying, I can't make the deadline or I'm too busy, get an intern <laughs> now. So this is how we do it. And we have hired more than 30 of those, maybe even 40 interns. We are 70 people and 30 and 40 of those are interns. 
And of course, they don't get a lot of money, like 5,000 kroner, that's the standard. But, and there's not a lot of money, I get it. But some of them are upgraded after two weeks. Some of them are managers in the company today. And they've been with us maybe a month, maybe a year. So it's a super great way to get people in, check them out. So the way we do it, and this is, so we don't do it that much anymore because now those 30 or 40 has student friends and they just come in. So now we don't, we don't have to do this anymore, but I'll, you should really do this because so if someone comes, so this is back in May and so on. And, and then people come to me and say, I can't, you know, now we are getting a hundred clients a month and how should I do this? They say, let's get an intern. So the same evening I posted this on Facebook in this interns meet startup, which is a great group Nikolai has started. And then I made a doodle, you can't see this, but I made a doodle. So I have four interviews tomorrow, 10, 10.30, 11, and 11.30 tomorrow. First one, get it, first served, and it's closed. It took me 15 minutes when I posted this, and I always did it at late night. So I would only get the ones who were not like gone to sleep too early. <laughs> so I always did this at like 12 or half past 11 or something, always. And so the ones that, you know, they were you know, like, they wanted something. And then it took me 15 minutes. And then those four interviews was booked for the next day. Then the next day, 10 o'clock, the first one came. They got 20 minutes and it's fine, bye-bye. And then the next one, next one, next one. And no CVs, no emails, no communication. And then after those four were done, I will call the one that I liked the most. Maybe sometimes there was actually two, so I just hired them both. And I said, can you start tomorrow? Bring your own computer. And they all did. So from today, it took me two days, and then I have some fresh hands. That are just, so what do I need to do? At Google AdWords, fine, I'll do that. Like that. So this has really been working a lot. This is one of our secrets, and I would like to share it, and just go in, copy this, do copy paste with audio and whatever your company is. Just do it, because you get so bright people, because we are 70 people, I think we have five Danish guys and some guy from Jutland, so maybe six. And that's it. <laughs> the, rest, the rest are people from around Europe and even Asia and, and you, we got one from the US. And I really like this in the company because now we want to expand and global and it's great to have people from, but also it's students who chose to go to Denmark. So it's a, another kind of people, I think, that is already not like the average in the country, but they came here because they want to have a better life or a better study or just want to see the world. Those are the kind of people who are in the company now. I really don't like hiring Danish people. Because right now, if I need to hire Danish people, you say, yeah, I'm fresh out of uh, Ken Mac, you know, and I, I, I just search on Google, I should get 35,000. Are you crazy? I'll get seven people like, you know, for that, you know, salary. Seven. So we don't do that so much. Um, so of course these are not managers from day one and of course we also hire you know managers on another level but we get a lot of these guys or India I mean those guys are cheap too so we use a company in India that you can get a full-time person for 7,000 kroner managed and they do all sorts of things for us it's super cool it's full-time those guys are part-time but India is full-time 7,000 you should really do that it's like this book called four hour work week or something He's onto something. Let them work. I mean, and then, <laughs> right. So my other startup hack, and, and this is, uh, so every time I do a startup education, you know, like I go out and I always use this one because if you want to start up something, you should really get five clients right away. Super quickly get five clients. So everybody with an idea like, hey, couldn't it be great? And let's develop something. And two years later, you come out or you don't do anything at all. It's super important that you today get five clients. And then people say it's not possible, but it is. Go sell it before you have it. Even people, if you're like, I wonder if I can make a flying bike. You know, you, you just go out and make a landing page and go on Google for AdWords or Facebook and just sell it. And if you get like 10 hits an hour, you answer something. So before you build something, go out and see there's a need for it before you build it. This thing is like, I wonder if I can sell good coffee here. I wonder. Instead of buying a super cool brown coffee machine that can take coins and everything, you just buy some paper thing here and then you make two holes. One it says put in money and the other one outcome coffee and I will be in here myself. I borrow a coffee machine from someone 
I go to 7-Eleven, I buy a very expensive coffee. You say, why don't you buy it cheap? It doesn't matter because it's quick. It's open right now and get started. So this, I can sell coffee here in an hour. I can start in an hour, maybe even before you leave the building. And there's three things, let me see if I can remember, there's like three things good about this. I can start really quick. It's cheap to get started because it costs like 100,000 to get a really good vending machine with everything and even coins and Dan Court and so on. So it's really quick. I accept almost all payments or, you know, almost <laughs> any currency. I don't care because it's just one big hole. You can just throw it in. But the most important thing about that one is actually the market input. Because if I did this in DTU, where I normally do speeches, there are many foreign people. So I would say, coffee, five krona, put it in here, and then coffee comes out here. Then an Indian guy would say, hmm, where is the tea? And I would hear this, ah, oh, he wants tea. And then next day I'll have tea. And then they come, where's the goulash? I'm hungry. Fuck, I'll have some goulash tomorrow. And if I had a vending machine, I would never get that input. And that is the most important phase in startup. That is the product market fit phase. That is where your product hits the market and you listen and it is missing a red button or it's missing T and you would know about it. That's why someone before me said that the founder has to go and sell, especially in the beginning. It's because you need that feedback to change your product for the right product market fit. And it doesn't matter that that was, oh my God, it's 45 krona in, use in 7-Eleven. I could get that across the border for like 20. It doesn't matter in the beginning. When I started Auto Yo Yo, I called um, Sir Nissen from Drive and I said, who do you use for credit cards? He said, Braintree. Great. I went to Braintree and you can get started free. Just get started. They have an API. It's free to use. Oh my God, I love it. Let's go. But then it was super expensive. It cost two krona per transaction and 2% every time. Right now we're getting 40,000 orders a month. That's a lot of money. So I called him again and said, are you crazy? It's so expensive. He said, what are you paying? And he gave me some really good price. I said, all right, cool, man, we'll get there. Because I don't have the bargaining power right now, but I will get there. So we just started with it because I knew that the big guys are getting it much cheaper. So we knew that, you know, that that would happen. Then I started negotiating with them and I did a really bad job because we're not that big yet, like last year. So I got 10, 20% off, 10, 20% off, and then I just got a new head of finance guy and he's really tough negotiator. <laughs> so he managed, even though I did this, he managed to cut our prices with 75% overnight. So we saved like 80,000 a month from that day. That was in August. So that just says, so my point is just, Get started, get your clients, and then make your company more efficient later on. It's a good idea that you know that you can get there like, I have an idea, just get going. And don't spend time on lawyers or stuff, just get going. Otherwise, you know, you will never start. And our growth hack, and th there's a lot of things here, but one of our big, so we had many challenges along the way, but one thing we had as a challenge was that it was so easy for us to make the hack eventually, uh, sorry, the, the app and the website and everything. And then we came to a challenge in the spring that we found out that even though we gave great app to this big pizza guy and we gave him a web and everything, we needed for his existing clients or new clients to start using the system. And this was a pizza guy, so he knew nothing about like AdWords and so on. And he got a lot of orders coming through Just Eat and so on. So we needed to help him doing that. And then we thought there's three ways we can get his customers. Like, so this is like business to business to consumer. So we need his customers to start ordering on his system that we built for him. And we could get new customers, like someone who's never ordered there before. That's a little pricey. Then we could try non-portal customers. So those are the ones who like to call and we had to change their behavior. And then you can take the ones that already ordered on an app that was called Just Eat and just convert them. And it was easy actually because those guys like to give a discount because they're paying 20 to 30% anyway to Just Eat. So when they're playing with us and they only pay a small fee every month, they like to get a 10, 10 or 20 or 15% offer deal or free delivery or something. So all we had to do is tell those customers, now there's, you know, I got my own app. 
So we did a lot of great, and we're still doing a lot of great things like stickers every time there is an order. So it's really beautiful like that. So when you order from Just Eat and you make an order and it comes to Pizza Guy, and often it's the Pizza Guy himself who delivers out. So he even makes a little flyer there saying, thank you for your order. Next time, download my app and save 10%. Why don't you do that? So that really worked. We had some of our customers doing SMSs. That really worked. But then we got a letter from Justy saying, we don't like that. So we don't do that so much anymore. But, <laughs> but it's really a cool app. Because if you take those 500 customers who orders from Just Eat at Juventus Pizza, and you send them an SMS, and maybe for poor Ombudsman doesn't like it, but it really is a great idea. Um, and you send them an SMS saying, hello, this is from Juventus Pizza, where you ordered 100 times before, and we, of course, like you. And now we got an app, and you can save 10% or 20% the next month. Do it. And then there was a link for downloading. That was really good. That was almost too good of a hack. And it was too good, so some lawyers didn't like it, and maybe for poor Ombudsman would come. So we slowed that down a little bit. In England, it's not that dangerous, so it's really good hack. But then we do other things like stickers and po now we are testing, you know, so it maybe even can it pay off that the ones that has ordered, we got their address so we can send them a letter saying, hello, you normally order from Justy, because the point is here that we have customers. I mean, we have, cu we have our customers' customers, like people like you, who has ordered more than 200 times in one year from one place. There may be a little bit, I haven't checked him, he might be, his name is Ronnie. He's in Belgium. I don't know if you know him. But we, we laugh about him a lot. But he's a great customer. He has ordered more than 200 times from the same place. That's 25,000 Kroner pizzas in one year. If that would have been just he, where he ordered before, he, they, that restaurant would have paid 5,000 Kroner back to that customer, uh, to, to Just Eat, just for handling that order. So we do that now for a small fleet every month. So that is the business. So the way we make you know, traffic, we found out, we tested so many things, and we still do this, but this one is really good <coughs> if we can get access to that in a legal way and do it right and so on. But it's really working well. Oh, that's a lot. So <coughs> this slide, I won't show you because then you will read it and you shouldn't. But my point is just that creativity is a huge thing in our company. It's a big thing to try to find another way, a cheaper way, a quicker way. Couldn't we and shouldn't we? Stuff like that. So one of the hacks we have is simply to get people to do it. Oh my God, should I really do this all the time? Let's get some people in. Just, they could just do it or some Indians or something. Let's just do it. So we just, we just get going. Um, and then I got all the, uh, how do you say that, philosophy thing, because this thing is something that last Philip just put on LinkedIn, uh, sorry, Facebook last week. And he was like thinking about why do we have so much success in the West. And, and we were so much behind and we only 10% of the world population and so on. And it's amazing what the West, or what Europe has achieved in the West. It's amazing if you look at top 50 high ranked restaurants and largest biotech and everything. We got it all. And why? And he blamed it all on creativity and so on. And that's why it's so important to lift it. So in, in we had, you know, so, so in our companies is allowed to do anything. Let's just try it. Take five of our clients and go crazy on them. Just try something. Just do it. And then do A-B testing. Like if I did it with paper, or I did it with SMS, or I did it with what works. Another thing now we're talking about, you know, what makes a, you know, a successful startup. There is a tip you should see from this guy called Bill Cross. And it's really interesting, you know, those 10, 15 minutes where he like statistically goes in and look at what makes the success of a startup. Because the funny thing is that every startup, even our company, there are so many other people doing it at the right time, at the, sorry, at the same time. So YouTube, many people tried that. Uber, they were not the first to do that. There are so many. So every time someone said, I got a unique idea, it's my idea, there's 100 people doing the same right now in all over Europe or all over the world. So he was like, why do some make it and why do some not make it? What is the, the, the most important factor? And then he looked at five things like the, the idea, the team, business model, funding, and timing. And the interesting part is, 
that is timing that is the most important thing. And that's bad because if you're born and wrong, <laughs> this, you know. but it just says something about that. Of course, the team is important, and of course, the idea is good, and so on. But the right timing is super important. And the reason why he said I, he was an investor, he invested in a copy of YouTube, but five or ten years before YouTube. And the problem there was that the internet wasn't good enough for us. So he put on a lot of videos. People couldn't upload and download and watch it because the internet wasn't good enough. So it was bad timing. And then YouTube came just in the right time. Airbnb was born in the financial crisis. So people want to save money. And it's cheaper to rent a bed or a room at someone. So that was just on the right edge of that. Maybe also Uber, I don't know. But it's just the right timing. And I believe, like with our order, yo, it's perfect timing now because people are getting used to the internet. They're already ordering on the, on the phone and now they can get it cheaper and everybody's happy. If I started audio 10 years ago, we couldn't do it. Even though the smartphone may have been there five years ago, it wasn't mature. But now half of all orders are online and so on and now it makes a big deal. If we were to educate the market to start ordering on the web, you know, that would be too much of a job. Now we're just asking to do it in another app or another website, and that is much easier. Much easier. I think that was it. Right. Thank you. Thank you.